Hello, and thank you for joining my presentation. I'm excited to present on a topic that is near and dear to my heart, how to build stuff that people will actually use. This is a common pitfall in platform engineering, and this talk is about how to avoid them. It's part of the platform design track at PlatformCon 2022. First, a little bit about me. My name is Michael Galloway. I lead the platform engineering organization at DOMA. I've been in the industry since the early 2000s, and I've worked at, had the fortune to work at companies uh, in this industry from Yahoo to Netflix. I'd like to begin my presentation by telling you some stories. Both these stories are ones I've witnessed or been a part of, and from many conversations with peers at other companies, I found that they are fairly ubiquitous in this wonderful space of ours, platform engineering. The first story is titled, Build It and They Will Come. There once was a platform team who had a great idea. They thought to themselves, why are customers solving the same problems in lots of different ways? What if we created a standard platform that they could all use? That'll be great. It'll make their lives easier and it will change everything. Everyone will be so happy. The platform team was excited. They had a vision. A year went by and they were building and building. There was so much they wanted to deliver. They focused on building a solid foundation that was flexible and reliable. And after all, everyone was going to start using it. The code was brilliant and the minds were clear. This is definitely going to change everything. Finally, the day came and the doors opened. After being heads down for a long time, it was time to start getting users on board. Only no one was at the door waiting when it opened. We thought we were going to face a flood of new users, they thought. What happened? So what went wrong? First, let's think about the problem they set out to solve. As a reminder, it was teams are doing the same things in lots of different ways. We should create a standard platform. This makes a lot of sense and is a fairly common problem. But who cares about this problem? Do individual teams care if other teams are doing something differently from them? Sometimes they do, but often standardization just proves as a benefit for those who maintain rather than those who use the system. Worse, in this case specifically, we're talking about teams that already had an existing solution. And depending on the pain level with those, that solution, asking them to change something new was really just asking them to take on extra work. What about the scope? If you remember, there was a view from the team that this platform would have a huge impact and would be a fundamental shift in the way things were done. Platform teams are in a fantastic position to have high leverage, broad impact work. Project scopes like this are not uncommon in our space. But if you are pioneering something new, is this really the right way to start? Let's turn to story number two, running in place. There once was a platform team that was very popular with all their customers for how fast they responded to requests. But as time went on, try as they might, they could not keep up with all of the requests, so their backlog grew and grew. What's worse, in order to turn around requests as quickly as possible, the team had little time to think holistically about their approach and instead ended up adding more and more complexity into their existing services. New exception cases needed to be added, new APIs needed to be created, and this resulted in a once simple service turning into a hairball of complexity. Finally, when it came time to look at cross-cutting needs, it became harder and harder to support this complexity and tech debt grew. Where it was once possible to evolve, the mountain of technical debt was now so heavy, the ability to change slowed to a crawl. So what went wrong? First, let's look at how the team prioritized work. The focus was on solving problems for customers as quickly as possible. On the surface, this is great. Customers appreciate getting their problems addressed as quickly so they can move on. But running as quickly as possible has its downsides too. Tactical work and small fixes lend themselves to quick responses. But what about the strategic work? What about the not urgent but important work that requires planning? Another observation from this story. When you prioritize addressing incoming customer requests, you often slip into a mode 
where there is just so many of them that they fill up your schedule of work for the foreseeable future. In effect, they become your roadmap. It's easy to see why the backlog captures real customer pain. Why wouldn't you want to address that? But what does that customer actually need? They have a problem that needs to be addressed, but is their request the right way to do it? When you function in a purely reactive mode, you triage pain. A platform team needs to also diagnose the cause of the problem so that they respond with solutions. What if the right solution is to eliminate the reason the customers ever need to deal with that service in the first place? Being highly reactive to help requests is nice, but helping them avoid the problem in the first place is even better. So now you've heard two very different stories, almost on polar opposites of each other. But what if I told you both stories actually have the same root problem? In platform engineering, we often make too many assumptions. We assume we know what our customers need. We assume we know the most important problems to solve. And we assume everyone else sees those problems and priorities the same way we do. Sometimes we're right after all. We are engineers building things for other engineers. Unfortunately, sometimes we're also really, really wrong. So how can we address that root cause? How can we find out what our customers need? How can we determine the most important problems to solve? How can we make sure everyone sees things the way we do? Well, the first step is I have to get curious. First, start getting to know your customers. Start interviewing them in private sessions and ask them questions like, what are they working on? What are they, they mostly focused on during the week? What tools do they like to use? Find out what they do and don't like about their experience today. What tasks are tedious and what tasks do they do a lot? Record those sessions and involve your teammates. Don't let this be a leadership activity. This is best when it's IC to IC. Invite others to listen in and dive into questions. Heck, you can even also invite user research folks to help guide you into how to, be, how to set up effective interviews. Next, look into the steps that they take to complete common tasks. How do they build features? How do they debug production issues? Some of this may come from the interviews, but you also may find other data sources to draw from, such as runbooks or onboarding documentation and so on, especially the material that's maintained by those teams. Finally, map their journeys. A question I'm particularly fond of is, if I had a magic wand, or rather if you had a magic wand, what would you change? You can scope the question to their tools or their experience. This is about getting them to be a bit creative and to remove any constraints. The single question reveals top of mind pain. It works nearly across the board. It won't always give you deep insights into a big problem to solve, but it often speaks to very meaningful issues to think about. Next, and don't, don't forget their stakeholders. Your customers are more than just the engineering teams who help. We found it critical at DOMA to also talk to the product teams and design teams and others who have expectations from the engineers. What did they need from them? How do they work together? Do they evaluate changes, for example, or do they capture bugs? These are all part of the developer experience and knowing how people work helps get a holistic picture. You also need to understand the business context. What are the biggest profit centers? What kinds of changes does the product need to make to stay relevant? Are they in experimentation mode or are they in cash cow mode? Ask leadership the scary stuff. What keeps them up at night? What horrible thing could pop up that we forgot to address? This information is vital to remember as everything you do should come back to these topics when you begin to communicate your plans. This is the framing that leadership has on the problems that matter most. Your ultimate success will lie in your ability to tell this story well in the future. People love facts and figures. They trust them. They rely on them. When they see them in your presentation, they tend to believe them. But more importantly, they are vital to you quantifying their con the concerns you've heard and defining targets to go after. Great sources might be GitHub, CIC pipelines, JIRA tickets, cloud logs, and so on. 
So now that you have all this fantastic information, you can start defining your vision and plans. Armed with the problems your business and customers need to address, you can begin to find a meaningful answer to this question, why do you exist? A purpose, your why you exist, is your core anchor. It's what everything else you do will connect back to. It's how you will form your priorities, your mission, and your roadmap. It should be simple, compelling, and timeless. I love this definition from Van France. It's so simple and yet powerful. Using this purpose, it becomes easy to see how everything from the way that they design their parking lots to the selection of flowers and plants, the food vendors, and so on, connect back to the single simple concept. This is what a great purpose statement can do for your team. Now that you've got your purpose down, look over these journeys again and imagine a better future. What if your customers didn't have to do step number two? What do they need to care? Why do they need to care about how CICD is done? What if you could handle that for them? This is where you start to uncover deeper opportunities that your customers would never request directly. It's here that you'll make your biggest leaps. Now it's time to roadmap. But remember, your goal is not to build stuff, but rather to solve problems. So as you break down your areas of investment, remember, focus on outcomes, not output. What tangible value are you going to deliver every quarter? What metrics will move? Next, you need to align. Don't think you've nailed it just because you've got a vision and a roadmap. You need feedback. This is the crucial step to avoid the build it and they will come trap. You need to know that what you are building will really matter, that you understand the value they want. You also need to validate this as well. If you don't, you'll quickly find yourself in a land where you are not delivering what they want when they want it. This is about expectation setting. Getting this right early will avoid a lot of pain later. Customers will also have their own perspective. So you wanna create space in your plans for them to be able to link their ideas and goals uh, as well. The more you invite them in, the more they become a partner, not just a customer. And this will open the door for faster adoption and better feedback cycles later. You're basically signing up your first customers. Finally, you need to go on a roadshow and you need to share, share, share. You need to travel to your customers, get in front of them in their meetings, in their team gatherings, in their one-on-ones, in their demos, in their Slack channels, in their email groups. You need to communicate out steady and often, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, the same message, the same terms, the same information and your progress as well on your vision and roadmap. You need to do this over and over and over again. Folks need to hear it and you need to repeat it for it to sink in. And you'll know that that's starting to happen when someone comes back to you at one point and finally says, hey, when can I try that new thing you're building? A little bit about Doma. We're a prop tech company focused on transforming the absolutely horrible home closing experience. Our vision is to fully digitize the process and make it simple, seamless, and transparent. From offer close to move in ready. If you're interested in disrupting a rusty industry with technology, please check us out. Thank you again for watching. I'll be available on the corresponding platform con Slack channel today for Q&A. Again, my name is Michael Galloway.